And the big project this weekend that we're going to dive into is figuring out what type of real damage we have behind these walls. So we know this window and this roof was leaking right here. So most likely we can tell right here, this entire wall is shot probably all the way up into the ceiling. So we're going to have to build some type of temporary support wall most likely here on the inside and then tear that wall out. So what we're going to have to do is get all this off and figure out what we're going to do. Cause we're going to, we're going to, we already plan to replace these windows with different windows. Um, I'm not sure if that window is staying or not, but we're actually going to get rid of this door. So a lot of stuff's coming out and changing in here. But the reason why it's urgent right now is we, we want to make sure that this header beam up here or header above the windows or actual rafters where they come and meet the top of the wall, that there's some good wood up there because Tracy, our roofer is going to be out here in a week or two. He's going to build a new roof with better slope. There's hardly any slope on this roof. And that's what's causing the water not to drain off into the gutters, but actually come back, leak down the wall and also leak down these back walls. Uh, so you had a combination of rain, water, leakage coming in here. And you also had, you can smell and you can see the pet stains as well. So um, lots to uh, get to here. So we're gonna get this whole back area from where we started back here. We're gonna get the flooring ripped up, the walls opened up, and a lot of the walls in here out because we're not really just gonna have one wall right here. No closet here, no bath bathroom here. Bathroom's gonna be moved back into this room. This is gonna be the mud room. Gonna put a door in somewhere here and take this window out. So a lot of work to be done in here. We gotta get it opened up to see what we are up against. Demolition tools of choice. Why do I make things complicated? Why do I lose all my control? Oh, oh. I keep on letting my bad habits Make us both come crashing to the floor Something to save us Close but we're strangers Feel like we're far apart So if there's any good news here, I was expecting this to all pretty much be rotten all the way down and all the way up. But um, this is good, which hopefully means that upper beam up there is good at least part of the way across. Uh, so we're most likely not going to have to take out this right here. Windows coming out anyway, at least this section of window. Hopefully our damage is right in here, but we've got to get a little bit more um, taken out here to see that. Second small piece of good news. So it appears the water was coming back down this way because it's not, it's not sloped enough, but it was sloped, wasn't sloped enough to go and get into gutters without causing backup water. So the water was backing up all the way to the back wall here, especially in that back room and coming back down. But the most, the biggest problem appears to be that the gutters were filling up and the water was coming over the gutters and coming in. So it wasn't getting behind the roof up there, it was just coming over the, over the gutters and coming in through this soffit that they had put up on the side at the top of the, <clears throat> of the, uh, of the roof here 
Uh, but this board looks to be perfectly fine and most of the water damage seems to be coming in right here at the soffit level. Take that out, you can see the soffit that they have right here. This is the outside siding on the other side of this. And so the gutters, were, water was just coming in through the gutters and rolling down the saturating this. So we may see more upper damage as we get further over here, but we will see. Right now, most of the damage is along this header beam right here above the windows. Well, I'm not sure if this is common or not. I did not think so. Um, but they have uh, no board on the outside wall. So they had some of this foam cut in piece by piece vapor barrier that looks like they put in they put this in after the frame the wall instead of putting it up in large sheets they put little sheets in there and then right there's your siding and then inside here they had um, pieces of drywall just piece milled it in not full sheets just scraps it looks like that they used and uh, then they put paneling on top of that so and this is why when we bought the house we pretty much knew we were going to take it down to the bare bones and we knew we were going to run into some problems we could tell just by the fact that it was only a 20 something year old house and it had so many leaks and when the roofer looked at the roof said the roof was poorly constructed we saw some of the poor elect electrical connections and uh then we heard the story that the uh the, the old man that built it um basically took a lot of the materials from buildings that were torn down in the town of Big Sandy. So I guess he was, uh, I don't know if he was a contractor or just a handyman, but uh, definitely today's standards or even 1999 standards, I think he was uh, not paying attention to that. Uh, and he definitely did that. But uh, we're finding a lot of issues that we're going to have to uh, clean up, fix, and do right. Talk about a fire hazard. Um, look at this here metal box that's rusting because the water was coming down here and running right into this outlet water and electric um, really don't miss mix so this water running down here into this outlet metal box rusted that's been going on for a while um, it's a wonder this house didn't burn down Something to save us close but with strangers feel like we're far apart strip it down lights off in here because I'm working on some electric but I wanted to show you one thing so this is a shower Chris is getting ready to move the shower out um, but to do so you got to disconnect the uh, water and when they put the house in they put no shutoffs in so it's always good to uh, put uh, a shutoff valve um, but we just cap these off because we're actually going to replace all this CPC with PEX most likely um, over here on the sink it did have uh, shutoffs so get out of the way there so you can kind of see in the light. Um, we left those shutoffs there. So for right now, we're pretty good with water. Um, when I was removing the back area back here that we're working on, one of the reasons why we're using PEX is because it's more flexible. And you can also run red and blue, which makes it easier to identify the lines. But when I was removing this wall, it basically snapped these. So that's why I've got the water shut off. I figured why I had it shut off, I'd go ahead and cut those other ones and put the cutoffs or the shutoffs, the caps on there. Um, so we're good to go now with water. We still got the toilet hooked up in here. We're still using that for now and uh, the washer and dryer. Uh, everything else, all the sinks have been capped off, shower's been capped off. So we're good to go. Uh, I'll let that dry for about 30 minutes, maybe an hour, and then turn the water back on. And we should be in good shape. So we're going to continue on the uh the demo in here taking out these walls opening up these walls and we just heard from the roofer today that uh monday start of week four he's going to be here to start on the roof so we should have the uh, the water issues all solved we'll replace some of these studs out get this ready to reframe and uh this 
section back here with our utility mudroom and kitchen will be ready to start on the actual remodel. So you may be wondering why I've been saving these studs, two by fours, the longer ones anyway. Um, the reason why is we're going to have to, or prefer to put in a temporary wall. I'm just going to build a temporary wall in here to hold the weight when we replace this window and these studs out here. So we'll get rid of all this rotten board and we'll want a temporary wall up there when we do that. And that's why I'm saving uh, these old studs. That's crazy, but I mean, literally, this is this is the siding outside. So I mean, that's why it was leaking right inside the siding and rolling right down the walls. Now, fortunately, it's the it's the top header of the window in here, not the actual top cap where the where the rafters and where the roof's going to go. So we've got a little bit of damage, but I think that's still good enough that we can put that new roof on there and attach to those boards. So we'll have to check those out, see what the roofer thinks. But so far, that top cap is looking pretty good across here. Anyway, if you're going to build something, try to at least build it quality so that you're not going <clears> to <throat> lose your investment. So you can see here, why is there siding on the inside? Well, I guess when the house was originally built, this area that we're standing in here was a porch or the outside. And so this would have been the outside walls. When they put the extension on and the roof on out here, they just uh, basically left the siding there and went right towards it. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. <clears throat> Grandson Jack's helping me out today. Say hey, everybody. Hi. I'm supposed to <clears throat> the dirt. He is helping me stomp down the dirt, the ditch, the trench that we dug for the sewer. He's out there running around on it, trying to get it to settle down. I'm just like with his muck boots. This is uh, evidently an earlier addition or it was part of the original house because as I showed before, there's siding on the inside wall. So this used to be the outside wall and this used to be an entry door. So whoever did this part out here did a really crappy job. Whoever did this part, maybe a little better. And the fact that you've got your OSB plywood and then the siding. So a little bit better on this side. Spoke a little bit too soon, so. And you've got 16 inch centers here. I assume you got 16 inch centers somewhere else, but I'm not sure what this is all about. Whether they were just trying to save one board here, put a little fairing strip there and put a angle cut two by four here. They also had a piece of drywall mounted here because this wall's not square. So they had a drywall under behind here to make this wall square, so I'm not sure. <clears throat> what that was all about. But at least they've got the OSB between here and the outside wall and our top cap looks good. <clears throat> That's the most important part that we're looking for in this wall. Well this is another quality installation but this was actually done by uh, a local installer um, who was actually recommended by our inspector but I'm not uh, not convinced that I would go that direction. I don't know codes, but um, it seems to me like this uh, overflow and drain for the hot water heater should be tied into an actual drain. Uh, in this case, it's just a, a hole in the subfloor, and uh, that's wood and it drains through. So obviously, you know, if you drain it, you're getting wood wet and that's never a good thing. So we're already planning to replace all of this floor because of the uh, water damage from the roof leaks. I'm going to get this hot water heater out of here. We put it for sale. It's only a year old. It's about a $450 water heater. We're going to sell it, just try to sell it for $200, $250. Um, so I'm just disconnecting it right now and draining it so it can be ready if somebody wants to pick it up. And Jack's here to help me. As is Priscilla. He's my favorite. And we dog. did see 
as I was tearing the ceiling out, I thought maybe uh, all of the uh, mice evidence was um, vacated or non-active, but I actually saw a little mouse, well actually it was fairly adult mouse, poking his little nose and eyes out up there just a moment ago. So he is probably going, what the heck is going on, huh? Well, we're gonna get him out of here. He's gonna have to find another place to live. He's lived here long enough. All right, we're gonna call it a day. So our grandson arrived today. We're gonna go to the Big Sandy community Thanksgiving dinner tonight. So it's a couple weeks till Thanksgiving, but the Big Sandy High School here is doing a Thanksgiving dinner. So we're gonna go check that out. We're gonna ride the motorcycle since it's 70 degrees outside. <clears throat> and we're gonna go check that out with uh, our grandson, Jack. So we made some progress with the tearing out of the, what will be the new kitchen area. And then just got a little bit of a start on what will be the new mud room, utility room area here. <clears throat> So we're gonna wrap it up, go take a shower, get on the motorcycles and go to the, uh, the community dinner. I'm gonna get this all out and start a fire. We're gonna head to the Big Sandy Community Thanksgiving on our bikes, it's 73 today. Sun's going down, it's probably 69 right now, but still warm enough to ride the bikes.